Okay, so in this question, we have a plank which is at rest on a triangular support. A 5.0 kilogram mass hangs at 0 0.15 meters. So this is a 5 kilogram mass and it's hanging here. And then the center of mass of the plank is at 0 0.36 meters from the support. So this is where the center of mass is. So obviously this is where the weight of the, block, of the plank is going to act through. Okay, I'm going to call that W. And we're asked to calculate the weight of the plank, so we're trying to find W. So this is clearly a moments question because there's going to be a downward force from this mass here, pulling it down. And it's the clockwise moments are going to have to balance the anti-clockwise moments. So we need to choose where to take moments about first. In this case, it's pretty obvious we should take moments about the pivot here. Okay, so by taking moments about the pivot, actually ignoring the forces acting on the pivot, because of course the triangular block will apply a force to the plank itself. But because we're taking moments about that pivot point there, we don't have to worry about that. So secondly, right, uh, clock, sum of clockwise moments equals sum of anti-clockwise moments. So this symbol here, sigma, just means sum. And then I have just shorthand for clockwise moments and anti-clockwise moments. So what is the clockwise moment in this case? So it's going to be from this weight here that's going to spin it clockwise. So the expression for that will be W force times the distance from the pivot which is 0 0.36 meters, okay? Then uh, that's the only clockwise moment. There's no other clockwise moment, so we can move on to anti-clockwise moment now. So that's going to be from this one, okay? So from the 5 kilogram mass. Now that's a 5 kilogram, that's a mass, so when you turn that into a force, which is the weight, so 5 times 9.81, and then multiply by the distance from the pivot, which is 0 0.15, and that's a total of 7.358 newton meters and that's anti-clockwise so because this is balanced the clockwise moments must equal anti-clockwise moment so 0 0.36 w which is the clockwise moment must equal 7.358 which is the anti-clockwise moment so w will equal 7.358 divided by 0 0.36 which gives me 20.4 newtons which is the weight of the plank. Okay, a builder pulls a nail out of a floorboard. The minimum force that needs to be applied on the nail is 800 newtons. So because 800 newtons being, the nail is being pulled up with 800 newtons, the hammer is going to be pulled down by 800 newtons according to Newton's law. We need to calculate the force the builder needs to pull on the hammer with. Okay, so we need to calculate this force here. So firstly, this is clearly a moments question because um, the force aren't being applied through a single point. So I need to find a suitable place to take moments about. In this case, it's best to take about this point here. I'm going to call that A. So the first thing I write down is taking moments about A. And then I know the sum of clockwise moments must equal the sum of anti-clockwise moments, which is the principle of moments. So first I'm going to calculate the clockwise moments. So what's going to spin this hammer clockwise? Well, it's this force here. The force from the, the hammer, um, on the builder pulling on the hammer. So that's going to be F which is the force we don't know, so I'll leave it as F, times the distance, I'm going to turn that into meters, uh, 0 0.22 meters, okay, so that's the only clockwise moment, then they have to the anti-clockwise moment, which is going to be from the nail pulling on the hammer, which is going to spin this way, so that's going to be 800 times 0 0.07 meters, so that's 56 newton meters, okay, so, so the clockwise and anti-clockwise moments to add up, uh, and equal. So uh, 0 0.22 F must equal 56. So therefore F is equal to 56 over 0 0.22, which is 255 newtons. Okay, in this example, we have a 9,000 newton weight hanging on the end of a uniform beam, which, uh, which itself has a weight of 450 newtons. So I'm going to add these arrows onto the diagram. So that's 900 newtons putting down there. And the beam itself is uniform. That's quite important there. That means halfway along the bar, we'll have a 450 newton um, mass. So that means if the to total uh, length, horizontal length is 7 meters, it's halfway is going to be 3.5 meters. So that's where the weight of the, the beam itself is acting through. Okay, then of course there's going to be tension uh, in this rope that's pulling it as well. Okay, so firstly, this is clearly a moment's question again, so I need to pick a suitable place to take moments about. 
I think it's best to take moments about that point A. Okay, then you write sum of clockwise moments equals sum of anti-clockwise moments. And let's calculate the clockwise moments first. So things that are going to spin it clockwise from this pivot here. So if you pretend you're on this pivot here, okay, what's going to spin it clockwise? So this force is going to spin it clockwise. Or the same thing else, yep, is this one. This one's going to spin it clockwise. And this one, however, the tension is going to spin it anti-clockwise. So the clockwise moments, let's start off with the 9,000 9, Newton force first. So 9,000 Newtons times the perpendicular distance from the line of action. So if this is the line of action of the force, the perpendicular distance is 7 meters. Then I to add on the moments from the uh, 450 Newton force. So if that's the line of action there, the perpendicular distance is 3.5. So 450 times 3.5. That gives me a total of 64575 Newton meters. And those are the only clockwise moments. So I need to find the anti-clockwise moments now. That's going to be from the tension in the rope there. So it's going to be tension times the perpendicular distance of the line of action. That's 5 meters there. So that means that I need to make them equal. So 5t will equal 6, 4, 5, 7, 5. And if I rearrange this and I solve, I get t is equal to 1, 2, 9, 0, 0. Newton's to three single figures.